It's been 100 days since the first protest in Louisville demanding action in the killing of Breonna Taylor. Good evening, I'm Shay McAllister. Doug is off tonight. That protest happened the same day Kenneth Walker's 911 calls were released to the public. And tonight we have team coverage of today's protests from Jesse Cohen and tonight Gebregedgis. We start tonight with Jesse live in Jefferson Square Park where protesters have gathered nearly every night since May 28th. Jesse, you talked to people today about it being the 100th day. What did they have to say? Well, Shay, these protesters are exhausted. They are angry and they are frustrated that they haven't gotten answers in the Breonna Taylor case. She was killed in mid March and these protests started in late May. And ever since they've been gathering here at Jefferson Square Park downtown. I'm going to give you a live look of what we're seeing right now. Jefferson Square Park is what it's originally called. Since then, they have renamed it, claiming it in Justice Square. There is a memorial of Breonna Taylor right in the center. And 100 days later, they say that there has not nearly been enough change that they would like to see. It may look like a celebration of the life of Breonna Taylor. But to many of these people, a hundred days of protesting is nothing to be proud of. It sucks because we've had to be out here for a hundred days and we still haven't really seen any justice at all. It's hard to remember my life beforehand because there's just been so much happening. I'm pissed off. I'm irritated. I'm upset with our justice system. They've lost their voices chanting, marched for miles across town. We worked so hard. But their physical exhaustion does not compare to how mentally draining it's been. So it's definitely taken a huge toll emotionally, and I'm sure on most of the people out here. 100 days just represents, you know, 100 years out of the 400 years of oppression, 400 plus years of oppression that we've been dealing with. This ain't nothing. Carmen Jones says their fight won't just end with a decision. It's not just about getting a guilty or non guilty verdict. It's about changing the system that allowed that to happen in the first place. And Cheyenne Oswala says what they have been through thus far has prepared them for what could come. Since day 100, there's going to be a day 200, 300, 400, 1,000. A million if there has to be, we'll be out here every single day until we get justice. Anytime Travis Nagdi gets tired, he says he puts himself in the shoes of those whose lives have been taken. I'm like truly enraged because I know that that could have been me or that could have been my brother. Or that could have been any, any anybody else or any one of us. As long as I'm here, I'm going to keep fighting for her because her life was cut short for no reason. Now, earlier tonight, a large group of people did gather here at Jefferson Square Park and they made their way over to the jail, which is just a few steps away. Then they made their way down to 4th Street Live, went through 4th Street Live before getting to their end destination, which is the Kentucky Derby Festival Incorporated building not too far from here. Now, day 100 also happened to fall on Oaks Day, and regardless of fans not being in the stands, races are still happening. So this group made their way to the Kentucky Derby Festival Incorporated building at 3rd and Kentucky, which has no affiliation with Churchill Downs or the Kentucky Derby. They stood in the streets and chanted no justice, no derby, and discussed their plans for tomorrow.